Has anyone else got whiplash from like, we had that emotional moment where I was basically in tears and then we had that? <laughs> like, whoa, what a, what a, what a switch. You can feel it, right? I can feel it. This isn't the end. We can't let Sharper win. He might just be the key to this whole thing. Let's see. Fire and ice. Okay, we've hummed and we've wept. We've done all of that. 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 We've done those ones. Oh. Windows to the soul. We've got a new thing here. So we can refuse there. We can do malice here. Let's go malice. Let's do it. There was a... Oh, wow. We're all the way back here. Oh, we're all the way back here. I love this game so much. Oh, man. A malice lurking behind those eyes. A malice lurking behind those eyes. So this is where we encountered Nuncreed and we thought he was a baddie. Which he basically is. He basically is. Like a trap ready to spring. Come on, give it to me. Luca felt the weight of Nuncrete's hand on his shoulder. Something wasn't right. Yeah, this is where I thought Nuncrete was the baddie. I was like, oh my god. He didn't know why, oh, no. but something was telling Luca to get out of there. That's your fight or flight response, love. Listen to it. I just want this all to be over. Of course, I'm sure it will all work out soon enough. I should get going. I told Roxy I'd check for Rollo at the treehouse. Luca twisted free of Nuncrete's grasp. Of course. Luca. You know your dad and I were good friends back in the day. You can come to me with anything. Anything at all. Okay, bye. <laughs> and to the library we go. I uh, can't speak to Cardo. So we need to go to... Where are we going? Uh, I can't remember what how we get to the thing that tells us... Oh, there we go. Wait at the treehouse in case Rollo shows up. There we go. That's our mission. I actually think that this is my game of the year. I'm going to try and speak to these ki kids. The festival decorations are a bit humdrum. Dragon at rest, how are you? Now, if I were to throw a festival, it would be a thing to behold. I agree, this is all more than a little sad. It's worse than sad. It's boring. What if we did a little something to spice things up? I'm, I'm listening. I can't tell who's speaking. You know that festival sign still waiting to be unveiled. It should be a shame if someone... The two scurried off, eagerly formulating a plan. Hmm, but we know that that is Sharper Valentine now. Dragon at Rest, how are you? We know that that kid is this guy. We just know it. This person is always reading. M morning, noon and night. We are going to the treehouse. Uh, good just lurking today while at work. Hope your day is amazing. My day has been good. Um, I've done a few hours of work. I've been to Pilates. I've had some lunch. And now I'm here. But I am struggling to stay awake. I'm very tired today. Identify yourself, please. And Nelly meowed will. I work here now. I'm unable to locate you on our staff roll. Oh, I don't officially start until tomorrow. Mr. Kerr said I could come in early tonight to get a few things done. Oh, please. 
here it's authorised. Thank you. Ah, harvest awaits. Um, not sure what Pilates are, an exercise, right? Yeah, it's a bit like yoga, but, um, but not. <laughs> yeah. Wow! You could get a wrench to the noggin sneaking up on a guy like that. Don't scare a man while he's junking, sonny. Oh, evening, Jeff. Isn't it kind of late to be junking? I might as well ask the same thing to you. Oh, find anything good. Uh, ever since perennial harvest moved in, even the trash is junk. Uh, you can learn a lot about a person by looking at what they throw away. Uh, With this bunch of all shredded paper and coffee cups. Well, I'd better get going. Uh, I didn't see nothing if you didn't see nothing. Let's see what? Exactly. <laughs> Who's this kid? Hello. Oh, hey, Bert. Oh, it's Bert. Have you seen Rolo? Nope. Though I've mostly been talking to Clifford. They're setting up lots of stuff for the festival. This one said he had to process some answers. I told him that was fine. Oh, wait right until he gets back. Okay. Rolo? He aired a long holler into the woods. Rolo! <sighs> Rolo, wherever you are, I hope you're okay. Luca felt his eyes getting heavy and plopped into the beanbag. <sighs> oh, time for a little nap. He conceded to its lumpy embrace. <sighs> time for a nap. Time for a nap and some tea. Or he's Once gonna have again, a dream. Luca found himself in a vast black expanse. Oh, this game's amazing. This time, he knew exactly where to go. He took a single confident step forward. The world flickered and pulsed. He found himself standing in front of the frigid air of a blazing campfire. The source. He plopped down cross-legged and gazed into the cold flame. Wait, soon enough, the fire began to die out, popping sporadically, until all that was left was a single ember. Lucas stood up and dusted himself off. He plucked the glowing ember from the cold ash, examined it, and slid it into his pocket, a keepsake. The voice of his father spoke behind him. You made me proud, buckaroo. Luca turned to face him. Dad, what is this place? A warm grin grew across his father's face. A place where everything that has been and everything that could be all wait together. Luca found himself staring at his father's face, trying as hard as he could to memorize every single detail. Wait? For what? Another voice spoke out as Lucas Doppelganger stepped forward. That's up to you. Without knowing why, Luca began to weep. Is, is any of this real? Are you real? Luca's father bent down to smudge away a tear. Of course. I'm as real as the part of you that misses me. Luca turned to look at the older version of himself. And you? The doppelganger choked back tears. I'm as real as the part of you that's angry he's gone. Does that make sense? Through his tears, Luca laughed. <laughs> I think so. His father pulled him in for an embrace. Time to go, buckaroo. Luca was startled from his dream by a banging on the floor. Are you in there? A commanding voice rumbled from below. 
Just as Luca sprang to lock the entry hatch, the door knocked open. <gasps> Chapter 5 Dangers Big and Small Luca stumbled back. He heard the rope ladder creak under significant weight. Keeping his eyes fixed on the hatch, he inched backward to the balcony. As his hand grasped the door handle, Luca froze. A large figure clumsily wriggled up through the hole. Oh! Oh! Stop right there! Or I'll... Sheesh, I know it's dark and all, but I figured you'd recognize me. Who are you? The large figure cocked its head inquisitively. The mole, but older. Stop now, I'll club you with a baseball bat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Take it easy. The look at you need to get your eyes checked. It's me, Rollo. Nice try, but I know you aren't Rollo. You're like one of his random uncles or something. Where is he? <laughs> Uncle? Luca, go ahead mess it around. It's me! If it really is you, prove it. Just when I think we're near the end of this game. <laughs> oh. Flaming chicken coop, Luca. Luca's jaw dropped. He peered more closely at the man standing in front of him. Something about him was undeniably <gasps> Rolo. <sighs> Just like there's something undeniably sleepy about me. Wow. Only bigger. Older. I just don't get it. Changed. I don't get it. How? What happened to you? When I was running away, I ran into more people in those yellow suits. They grabbed me and dragged me away. What? Where did they take you? I don't know. They threw a bag over my head. It was cold and smelled like a swimming pool. I think it was an underground lab or something. They made my hands all big. Look! Rolo proudly presented his hands to Luca. Pretty sweet, right? I mean... It wouldn't be my first pick for a superpower, but beggars can't be choosers. Well, I mean, it isn't just your hands. My feet, too? Dang, Pa just made me new shoes. Wait, Luca, why are you so small? Luca moved to the side and pointed Rollo to his reflection in the balcony window. What the? His hands shot up to his face. Holy Toledo! Rollo, what did they do to you? They made me drink some sort of green crud. Ew. Actually, it wasn't too bad. It kind of tasted like licorice. I passed out and woke up like this. And then I sort of smashed up in my cage and escaped. Whoa, you smashed up in a cage? Kinda. At least I think I did. It's all a bit of a blur. Bed in a cage? Who are these people? I don't know who did this to you, but we're gonna fix it. Fix it? This is awesome! Well, I'm just glad that you're safe now. Look at... You don't need to worry about me. Sure, I got snatched, but look at it this way. I got snatched. I know where snatch people go. We may finally have a lead on what finally happened to your family. Maybe you're right, but this all seems dangerous. Danger? Ha! Rollo shadow boxed a few jabs. I'll take them all on. Hey, fellas. Uh, what's up? With a yelp, Rollo dove behind Luca. Ah! Take cover! Did I come out at a bad time? Who the heck are you? This is Beck. Sorry, something truly bizarre just happened and I need your help. I 
didn't know where else to go. So you're just hanging out here with your large adult friend? Oh, uh, no, this is my buddy Rolo. Uh, this is your missing friend? One and the same. He seems a little old. Ah, you know, this is a recent development. What the heck does that mean? Oh, I'm sorry. You're the one who just showed up out of nowhere. So we'll be asking the questions here. That's fair. How did you find us? In your silly little treehouse. I think you mean our silly little mission control. <laughs> Hate to break it to you, but your secret path isn't so secret. And I could hear your racket from a mile away. See, Looker, this is why we need to improve security around here. Not now, Rolo. Beck, you said something bizarre happened? Yeah, but... She shot a nervous glance at Rolo. Anything you say around me, you can say around Rolo. This has been a weird day all round, hasn't it? Yep. Beck's eyes narrowed. Okay, so it all started when I made it back home. My first order of business was to try to salvage my hair. So I dyed it with some stuff from the chemistry set my mum gave me. Okay, just need to play it cool and hope no one notices. Notices what? Oh, nothing. I was just, uh, come over here and let me take a look. Oh, honey, what in the world did you do to your hair? I just kind of felt like a change. This is going to take forever to grow out. You were the one who said that change is a good thing, right? I was talking about your mother's new job. I was talking about us moving. Well, I guess I just took your lesson to heart. Ilona tried to put on a smile. Before I forget, I came up here to tell you that Nellie had to go into work. Tonight? Her and Mr. Kerr decided it would be good for her to get some things done before tomorrow. That Kerr guy seemed like a great A creep. Beck. He is. Him and his weird cult of personality. You are not going to ruin this job for Nellie. It means too much to her. Oh, I know exactly how much it means to her. Yeah, it means enough for her to exile her daughter to this podunk, po oh, podunk town. I thought she was going to say podfunk. Podfunk. What's podfunk? Podunk town. This place sucks. The people are weird. You just don't know them yet. It's always cold. We're in the mountains, you'll get used to it. I can't even pick up a single decent station on the radio. It's all banjo music and farm reports. You know, I grew up in a town not that different from this one. Is that why you're better at talking to plants that, than people? Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. First of all, you're grounded. What? In the morning, I'll have Nelly come and see what we can do about fixing your hair. You need to look presentable for the festival. But not another pee. She sighed, and after a moment, looked down at Beck sympathetically. <sighs> I know moving is hard, honey. But that doesn't mean you have to make yourself miserable all the time. Other people seem to have that covered for me. Oh, and if you decide to rebel by dyeing your hair more. She flashed a sly grin and tussled Bex. I'll just shave it off for you. <laughs> Think of how rebellious you'll look then. Very funny. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, sweetie. Night, Mom. Lone Jedi, welcome in. Wait, wait, wait! First of all, this town does not suck. And second, you need help because you got grounded? No. I'm 
so you got in trouble. It's my fault your hair got screwed up in the first place. Don't worry about it. I actually kind of like this look. Great! Can we get back to the story now? The next part is the important bit. I have this radio I upgraded with my mom, and I was too angry to sleep. So I tried to dial in something worth listening to. Mr. Kerr, are you there? Mr. Kerr? Yes, I'm busy. What is it? Apologies, I have the founder on the line. Patch him through immediately. One moment. Hello, sir. It's so nice to hear from you. Skip the pleasantries. What's your report on our new deep on our new lead researcher of deep engineering? Mm, Nelly Meowdville seems to be integrating nicely. At this moment, she is working to help us meet our deadline. She offered to work overtime before I had even the chances suggested. Excellent. And you have faith that she's capable of finishing the work left by her predecessor? Her work must be completed before the festival. I'll make sure she stays day and night until it's accomplished. Good. You know how I feel about loose ends. Yes, sir. When she has the work finished, we need to make a determination regarding her um, long-term prospects in the company. Immediately, sir. I usually have more time to fully bring people into the fold. We're in the end game. We're in the end game, Bill. After your failures with Dr. Prescott, can't afford to take any risks. Of course, sir. No loose ends, sir. Once she finishes the work, she will either leave the office completely committed to perennial harvest, or she won't leave at all. Perfect. Sir, if I might suggest, maybe we should delay just for a bit. Oh. It's just, we seem to be rushing to hit this festival deadline. And rushing into things has caused some issues in the past. I see. Please understand that I just want what's best for you. I'm eternally grateful for all you've done for me. Bill, I'll make this very clear for you. I put you in to make things run smoothly, not to have opinions. Of course, sir. Chin up, Bill. You are only a few days away from having everything you ever dreamed of. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Whoa. Yeah. Just so we're clear, when they say loose ends, they were talking about murder, right? Like actually killing someone? Capital murder? Luca gave Rollo a quick elbow to the ribs. Who is this founder? I was hoping you guys would know. Nah, as far as we know, Kerr is the top banana at Perennial Harvest. He sounded scared of this founder guy. So we have an even topper banana in the field? What the hell is my mum caught up in? Has she talked too much about the job? Not really. She said she was going to come in and continue the work of someone she respected. Luca, do you think that body at the warehouse was... The person Beck's mom came to replace? That would make sense. Beck, it seems like Nellie's predecessor got um, loose-ended. I'm getting that impression. Okay, so we need to get your mum out of there before the festival happens. That's two days away. Won't she just come home after work? The creep on the radio said they were going to hold her until then. So if she's not coming out, then we've got to go in and get her. Beck flicked a large sheet of paper out of her pocket and slammed it on the floor. 
maybe this will help. Mm. You have blueprint blue blueprints. You have blueprints. <laughs> I'm keeping it in. Well, it's really just a welcome map for my mum's PH orientation day. But it shows the layout. Mm. Sure looks like blueprints to me. Look, here's the reception area, and there's a big room marked Founder's Office. It even has the exits marked. Guys, guys, guys! We have a deadline, we have an objective, and we have blueprints. You realise what this is, right? Rolo started to wiggle with excitement. <laughs> I think we're heisting! This is officially a heist. 